Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, all right, I got it. Love and marriage used to go together like a horse and carriage, right? And then you got married and then you had children. No, not anymore. No, it's no more love and marriage, horse and, horse and carriage. That's over. Not in this age. Now it's selling baby body parts. That's all. We've gone from love and marriage, love and marriage. Go together like a horse and carriage. This, I tell you, brother. Well, that, that's over. That is so retro. That's so 50s. Well, unless you're gay, then it's love and marriage, of course, and then it's okay. But it's, it's obscene if it's a man and a woman. In the new America, in the brave new world we're living in, it's, it's obscene if a man and a woman get married and have children. And uh, it's not obscene to chop up babies and sell the body parts by the ounce if you're in Planned Parenthood. Now, as you know, I talked about this yesterday, and the people who should get credit for this are those who did the underground film of these animals, these vermin, these Nazis that would have worked for Adolf Hitler to selling Jewish teeth. This woman who was seen in that video who is talking about how Planned Parenthood proudly is involved in this, sort of, you know, obtusely, would have sold the gold from the teeth of Jews in the concentration camp and talked about it as the, the byproduct of the dissolution of, uh, of enemies of the state. And so I got angry yesterday, very upset over it. I was sick all day from it. I really was. I was worn out from it. It just was such a hard topic to do. But it needs to be done again. And so I started to search my mind last night in bed. I said, wait a minute. This is nothing new. I remember back in 2000 when I just began in talk radio as a national host after six or, God, six years as a local host on KSFO. I, I was writing articles, and one of them was called Baby Body Parts for Sale. You've come a long way, baby. And I just dug it up from the archives. So here it is to all of you girls and boys in Planned Parenthood all of you neo-fascist Nazis of today who really would have been very comfortable working for Adolf Hitler selling the gold from the teeth of concentration camp victims. I'll read this for you. Apparently your parents didn't do a good enough job on their humanitarianism. Look where you wound up. And here's what I wrote. Isn't it interesting, here we sit in our comfortable America, all in a huff about the cruel Serbs, about downtrodden Afghan women, about the horrors in East Timor, about the tyrant Saddam, and about a dozen other issues far from our shores. And we contemplate whether we should bomb them or at least starve them with economic sanctions into conforming to our enlightened ways. Every day we are reminded of human cruelty in foreign lands. We see specials on TV about the Nazi atrocities in the death camps. We shudder and vow that it will never happen here, while our babies are being killed by the millions every year right here in the U.S. Yet we prefer to think it's Saddam or the distant Tigris and Milosevic on the faraway Danube, who are the threats to humanity. Remember, this was from 2000, long before those in radio were even talking. They weren't even crawling yet in radio. Not only are babies, even at or near birth, being killed every day in America, this bastion of human rights, but their organs are also being harvested and sold on the black market. They are being dissected, sometimes while still alive, and sold piece by piece. Ears for $75 a pair. Arms and legs, $150. A brain for nine ninety nine, tax not included. That's right. It's called the unholy harvest. I wrote the rotten, mean faced, clipped haired abortionists, our present day fascist jackboots, are selling baby parts and making millions of dollars in their factories of death. Companies such as, and I name one, are making even more millions. If you want an unprocessed baby, it's seventy bucks. Do you want the baby's bone marrow? Two hundred and fifty bucks. Do you want the baby's eyes? Seventy five bucks. A spinal column will run you eight fifty. If you want an intact embryonic cadaver, it will cost you four hundred bucks. Their brochure reads, quote, fresh fetal tissue harvested and shipped to your specifications where and when you need it, close quote. It's becoming a huge business, I wrote, and some of this money is being funneled to the Clinton Gore machine. We were told women in politics would bring us compassion. Yet Barbara Baxe Demon, California, is the loudest cheerleader for this infanticide. I pray to God that there is a hell. 
Anybody who supports partial birth abortion, anybody who supports the sale of fetal body parts in the name of choice should rot in hell a thousand years. We're living in a psychedelic world in a psychedelic country. It makes me feel like we're living in Nazi Germany. But even the Nazis didn't sell the body parts. Isn't it also interesting that the international community, instead of threatening to bomb or take sanctions against us for mass infanticide, is in a huff about our imprisoning convicted terrorist murderers? After all, the likes of UN Secretary Generals, etc., say these hardened assassins are innocent political prisoners. But what can you expect? I think they still practice infanticide and female castration in Gali's and Anand's enlightened countries, too, I wrote. Do you think I'm making this up about the body parts? Well, I received this documented information from blank. If you want to get the truth about this heinous crime and to help put a stop to the butchery of innocent life, I give out a number. Do not be a good German while the boxcars roll to the baby-killing factories of death. This is your holocaust. Stop Senators Barbara Boxer and the others before they harvest more. And then I, no I noted a U.S. Senator named Robert Smith of New Hampshire who's trying to stop the inf infanticide. He is no longer in the Senate. The only one in Congress, actually he's not even in Congress, is Jindal, the governor of Louisiana. He is the only politician who is having his police apparatus look into Planned Parenthood and their infanticide. That's today. That's Michael Savage's writings from the year 2000. Baby body parts for sale. You've come a long way, baby. So burnish my halo with me, will you? 855-407-282. Now on to Iran. This is an interesting story because uh, the uh, Ron Paul, the Ron Paul, Ron Paul says it's a good deal. Many of you libertarians agree with him. Ron Paul praises Iran nuke deal, says critics misinterpreted it. So Ron Paul is actually supporting uh, the man with the crazed eyes. And he said it's a big step toward world peace. And Republicans would be praising it if one of their own had negotiated it. Says former Tex rep Ron Paul on Newsmax TV's The Hardline. Now yeah, we're going to play some of that sound later. And here are some of the other headlines. Uh, that are captured to my attention. Obama commutes sentences for drug criminals and writes them personal letters, ignores the Steinle family in San Francisco. Can you believe this? And today, the demon is out there after getting a nuke deal with Iran. Now he's now trying to free the prisons like the Bastille of drug dealers. Why is he rushing to commute the sentences of drug dealers? What is he doing here? What is it, one day to the next? The man, where does he get this demonic energy from to do such damage to the social order? Does the amount of commutations that Obama has given out surprise you? He's exceeded that in the last three presidents. And why has your great president continued to ignore the family of Kate Steinle, who was killed by a Mexican illegal alien? Yeah. And then we have these topics. Obama goes nuclear defending Iranian deal. Election 2016, do you care at this point? Are you tired of the election coverage? What are you, are you really that interested in 2016 now? I, I'm not. Here's another little story for all of you multiculturalists, all of you diversity freaks. A Muslim screaming, Allahu Akbar, grabbed a young lady in Rome and held a knife to her throat at Rome's Colosseum and said, Allah commanded him to do it. Allahu Akbar! It's the religion of pieces, as I've said to you. Definitely a religion of pieces. I mean peace. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's a religion of peace. We have other topics to talk about on the Savage Nation. Again, you're invited to call. And if you get on the show, why, you'll reach more people than you'll meet for the rest of your life. And please, the regulars, we, we know your voices already. Don't call. There's a regular bill from MAL, take a walk. There's a guy in New York on WABC, changes his name every day. And the minute he gets on, it's like, oh, I tell the screener, how do you get through you, for God's sakes? Regulars are show killers. We don't want them. Go call a liberal show and give them your opinion, okay? We'll play the Ron Paul clips. We'll talk about the topics of the day. I'll talk about the statin drugs. I never get, I don't know if it's statin or statin. You say apple. I, I mean, how do you do that? I don't know whether it's statins or statins. I always get it wrong. And here I am, a medical professional with an actual doctorate in the field. How do you, why is it statin or statin? I think I once remembered it was statin, like Staten Island. Remember Staten Island? Statin drugs, good or bad. They're pushing statin drugs now to younger and younger people because the, 
the medical uh, pharmaceutical establishment is so powerful and so greedy. After they've drugged your boy to death down to the age of zero, they put your children on drugs down to the age of zero. Now they're moving to lower the age at which they recommend statin drugs. I don't take them. And by the way, I'm at very high risk of a heart attack and have been for 30 years or more. According to the data, I should have been dead 30 years ago. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not tempting you, God. Please, you know, I'm just joking. I'm one of your jesters. Okay. I'm one of God's jesters. I admit that. I'm not one of the jesters of the government. I'm one of God's jesters. He put me on earth to entertain you. And don't pay any attention to anything I say. After all, I'm not at ABC. I'm not like that guy Wilson, whatever his name is. I don't even know his I can't remember. Williams. I can't remember his name. I don't remember the neighbor who hung himself again. Williams. Williams. Brian. No, that's a reliable source, the Dan Rathers of our time. That's who you turn to for the truth. I don't take statins. I took them once and my legs didn't work. I just can't take them. They're horrible because they cause a lot of damage in the liver. Now, the good doctors who put you on statins, don't, they're not trying to do you harm. Many of you can tolerate low doses of statins and fine for you. Uh, and they also are smart enough to put you on coenzyme Q. I don't take statins because it made my muscles just unfunctionable. My, my leg muscles were so bad I could hardly walk. So my liver was talking to me, and my liver said, Mike, stop taking statins. They're not good for you. I just take the CoQ, not the statins. And fish oils, by the way, despite what the pharma pharmaceutical establishment will tell you, fish oils have lowered my triglycerides by about 35%. They're fabulous. They're wonderful. So there's a lot, of, a lot of lies out there from my point of view, whether it's about the sale of baby body parts, which Planned Parenthood is calling humanitarian, or the uh, sale of state and drugs, or Obama selling the deal with Iran, or whatever it else, it, else it is. You know, I'm giving you one man's opinion. What would you like to say? 855-407. Look at these callers. I got good ones. The minute I come back, I think I'm going to get Bob, I mean, Carl on WBOB, on the Savage Nation. If you like to join the show again, the phone number is 855-407-282. And I need to direct you to michaelsavage.com because some of the stories that I'm going to cover are there. Some of them are not there. But some that I did cover are there. My newsletter is there. I'm here. You're there. And I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Those days are over. Forget about love and marriage. Unless you're gay, of course. Then it's revered. You're invited to the White House. They light up the White House for, for your... Um, to celebrate your marriage. If, if you're a hetero, though, you're just a breeder. Just a breeder. And the only thing you're useful for is producing baby body parts, freely. I just forget about it. I mean, welcome to the New World Order under Barack, the mad-eyed Obama. You know, back in the ancient days of Greece, long ago, way back, right around the time of Pericles, there was a man named Socrates. Socrates was a man who started to influence a lot of the brilliant young men of ancient Greece. And the powers that be didn't like Socrates. He disturbed their minds. And in the end, he was executed for disturbing people's minds in 399 B.C. And in those days, uh, they didn't give him the electric chair or a needle. No, they uh, sent old Socrates in the dignified fashion of the Athens of those days Speaking of Greece, they sent old Socrates to his home to drink in his own house and among his own friends a poisonous mixture of liquid made from the hemlock. And he was killed. He drank hemlock. Now, today the hemlock consists of CNN and MSNBC and ABC smearing conservatives. They've tried to give me the hemlock since the year 1994 here in San Francisco. The hemlock consists of uh, protests, boycotts smears, misquotes. Anyone who stands up to the ugly, disgusting, liberal, psychotic machine is given the hemlock of the media. They're trying to give Trump the hemlock right now. I hope that he gives hemlock back to them. I'd like you to take your Macy's card out and cut it up, by the way. I'd like you to take out your Macy's card and take a scissor to it. 
Trump supporters cut up Macy's credit cards after store severs ties. That's all. You know, you have the power of the purse. There are far more of you buying things than there are illegal, Ill, you know, illegal aliens, incidentally. And if Macy's want to cater to the illegal aliens, good luck to them. You know, they can change their name from Macy's to something else. But anyway, they can change it to Hasty's if you like. I don't know. I go through Macy's near me. I walk through there, there with the dog. I try to avoid the perfume department because I have an allergy attack every time I do from that toxic poison. But I'm not going to go in there anymore. I, that's I'm cutting up the card. You know, you're in a war for the survival of America. You got to do what you got to do. 855-407-282 is the phone number. WJR, James, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Uh, re regarding the, the, the sale of these fetal body parts, uh, I work in the, in the medical laboratory in the field of histology, which is the preparation of uh, tissues and fluids for analysis by a pathologist so they can make a diagnosis. And uh, listening to this woman talk about the sale of fetal liver and why everybody wants it, uh, the fetal liver is used in my field for an exceptionally small number of stains. Uh, to give you some idea of how common these stains are, I have run them exactly zero times in my career. Uh, did, did you say, did you say, hold it, did you say fetal liver is used for a certain type of stain, S-T-A-I-N? Uh, correct, sir. Yeah, for the diagnosis. Okay, you're, talking, you're talking about microscopic stains, I get it. Most people wouldn't have gotten that. Uh, correct, sir. Uh, I mean, if they went to law school, they wouldn't know what the stain was other than that in their pocket from a leaky ballpoint pen. Uh, stay on the line and we'll talk more about the human stain of Barack Obama and Barbara Boxer. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Pool cues, Mick Jager, windmills. I need a car ride, man. It's summertime. I need to go down Highway 5 and go past the Altamont windmills. And remember Mick Jagger and the Hells Angels and the pool cues. I, I associate it that way. Or if I fly over Altamont, all I can think of is Hells Angels with pool cues. Isn't that weird? I see windmills. The next thing I do is see pool cues and Hells Angels on stage. It's crazy. I mean, the way you associate things. The psycho liberal judge from New York, a red diaper dopa baby vermin of the lowest order. I won't, I won't read his name. A red diaper dopa baby of the lowest order, a former social worker, becomes a judge. You know what a judge is in America, don't you? And he gives Dinesh D'Souza four years of psychological counseling. He says, you're mentally ill, basically, for doing the thing you did. This is right out of the Soviet Union. Look who did it. Look who did it. A little liberal from New York. A good social worker. A good progressive social worker. A good people. One of the good people. You know the type, self-congratulatory, New York progressive, a Larry David with a black robe? You know the type. They're better than you are. They always have been. And he's now doing what the Soviets did, giving people pr uh, uh, prison sentences, basically, for thought crimes. But this, it's a look where the thought crimes are coming, the punishment's coming from all the good liberals. They're progressives, and they suffered so much in their life. They've been victims their whole life. So Dinesh D'Souza gets that kind of sentence. And he had one of the biggest lawyers in New York, Benjamin Branfman. Did him no good. Must have cost him millions to get a sentence like that. He could have hired a shyster on the storefront in the Bronx and gotten a better sentence. Must have cost him millions. Look what he got. The guy threw the book at him anyway. Anyway, here we are. Do we have Obama yet? I'm asking for him with the prisoners. Anything. I'm groping. Just give me Obama in the prison. What are you looking for? You have it on the log. Play it already. These men well, and women were not hardened criminals. But the overwhelming majority had been sentenced to at least 20 years. 14 of them had been sentenced to All life. Right, we get the picture. Now you want to open the best deal. Like, right, turn it off already. After the Iran deal, now it's the drug dealers. What's tomorrow? What's left on his punch list? What else on the punch list to this maniac? Iran, drug dealers... How much can you take, you morons, you? You're watching a revolution in front of your eyes and you're doing nothing about it. You got the stumble bum Boehner on the other side. I don't know how this guy gets up in the morning, Boehner, and shaves himself with the shaky hands he must have, the shakes in the morning from all the booze that goes down that gullet. 
What a putz. No protection from the other side, and we the people are nullified. What's next on the punch list? I don't see how many more things are left on the on the socialist, liberal, progressive, slash, whatever, anarchist punch list. The anarchist cookbook may contain Obama's goals for the rest of his uh, term in office. Because I can't, I can't understand where this guy's going. What is left? He's done virtually everything the radical left ever dreamed of. There's almost nothing left. Gay marriage, check. Socialized medicine, check. Spying on people with impunity, check. Go down the list. Go backwards. Deal with the devil. People who want to blow us off the planet, check. Go ahead. Go down the list. What's next? The prisoners the next day. Re relieve them out. Get them out of jail. The Bastille. It's funny to me, by the way. Yesterday was Bastille Day for the French. And it's the same day that uh, this uh, wonderful president of yours goes to prison and talks about getting them out of prison. He releases more drug dealers in one day than the previous four presidents. Again, nothing. Check. No opposition. So w what is he doing? Why does he want him out of prison? What's this about? What's And what's next? Where can this go with all the months left to uh, to play out? I mean, what what is on this guy's agenda? What do you think his, his ultimate goals are? Because he's given away that he can get away with anything. And there's no uh, no opposition. So he's gotten everything he wanted. He was put in office, obviously, to get the Iran deal. This, to me, looks like this is it. If you really want to analyze the biggest piece of the whole deal, it's the Iran deal. Giving them the right to develop a nuclear weapon under the guise that is for peacetime use. And that's the number one thing he was put in office for by the secret powers, that to put this man in office and keep him there. But what's next? Tell me what he can do next. What is next? What's on this man's punch list? Tell me. WJR, George, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, uh, they profess to be wise. But uh, I mean, sir, please. I don't know what kind of call screening I'm getting today. When you come on a national show, don't hem and haw. Make your point and move on. Okay. They profess to be wise and are made fools and are handed over to reprobate minds. Sir, I don't know what you just said. I'm sure it makes sense to you, but what is it you're saying? Some we got a strong arm dictator with a weak Senate or whatever. All right. I wouldn't put you on a high school radio show. I don't know what I'm getting today. I don't know what my call screen is doing. Can you put down the hot dog and start screening some calls? It's like three in a row now. One is talking about stains. I don't know what they, where that was coming for next. About a, a, something that a four-year-old would understand. What is this? I'm not taking any calls. You want to call the show, take a shot at it. You know, pearls before swine. I read about Socrates, Hemlock, what I get. Hey, Mike, them Dems, they really are bad. And I got to tell you that we need liberty in this country. And them founding fathers were really the, them founding fathers were the right way to go. Yes, indeedy, they were gods. Every one of them founding fathers, they were better than you and I, Mike. No, they were slaveholding. You think they were so great? How do you guys put the founding fathers on a platter? They were monsters, most of them. I try to tell you that. They did a good job in creating the Constitution. They had some good ideas, but stop already elevating people to some status that no one should enjoy. Didn't I teach you what happened right after the Revolutionary War? You forgot that already? I don't know how your brains are being washed about the Founding Fathers. Right after the Revolutionary War, which was fought in large part over taxation without representation, by the way, the British were taxing whiskey in America. Did you know that? And the uh, farmers and settlers didn't want to pay a whiskey tax. So basically they went to war over that. You don't know that. It's one of the biggest things you hear about some noble cause. It was always about money. Like the Civil War was about industrial power and money. You know that. And I've told you that and I've showed you uh, Lincoln's own words to prove it. The beginning of this Civil War was not about slavery. It was about, it was about uh, the industrial power of the North. Things like and taxation. South wanted to secede. Lincoln said he'll do anything to stop the secession, keep the Union together. And then he added on slavery at the end. But having said that, so the Revolutionary War was about money. As usual, war is usually about money and nothing else, incidentally. So right after the founding, the great founding fathers defeat the British, and uh, they have all the power that they want, they impose a whiskey tax on the Americans. And they, whiskey, what? Yeah, so the settlers say, wait a minute, we just fought a war against the British. We don't want to pay a, a tax on booze. So the founding fathers, who you've thinking and been led to believe are so great, 
put together a new army of 13,000 men to put down the Whiskey Rebellion. And it was the largest army ever, ever convened on American soil. It was larger than any army convened to fight the British. And it was to fight the settlers or the whoever you want to call them, the colonists, who were refusing to pay taxes. And they put down the Whiskey Rebellion and they put a tax on booze. Did you know that? You didn't know any of it. All right. Well, all right, once in a while, you got to throw in a little history. 855-400-7282. Is there a caller out there who is not uh, going to give me what I don't need? Or else I'll just read history for that matter. Chop, baby. I'll read my website. We now go to the home of the savage nation, borders language culture. Chop, baby, sold by a presumed Catholic from Vox Cantor. Uh, Muslim screaming Allahu Akbar holds knife to tourist neck at Rome's Colosseum. Next is a picture of two husky, uh, they look like illegals to me, threatening a New York Police Department traffic officer, and they beat her up for issuing them a parking ticket. And my headline is Diversity at Work. Underneath that is the top 25 streaming talk shows, Michael Savage at a 25 share, Rush Limbaugh at a 12 share, Laura Ingram at a six share, and then the rest drop off the uh, the cliff. I should have Laura on. I like her. She's a good woman. She's very classy. I like her on Fox News. She makes the other girls look like what they are. No, she's definitely in a, a league of her own. Uh, nuke deal removes sanctions on Iran's terror commander. Dem candidates silent on alleged Planned Parenthood felonies. Court forces nuns to violate religious beliefs. The H boss can't say if administration reaching out to SF murder victim's family. The genius Jed Johnson says he didn't know who he was. Never heard of the Steinle family. Where'd they get this guy from? Who is he? Next story. Trump supporters cut up Macy's credit cards after store severs ties. Oh, here's a hot one for those of you into this uh, national security. Defense secretary calls military's transgender ban outdated in orders review. That's just what we need. Boys and girls, that's just what we need in the war against ISIS is transgender troops. We need them badly. We must have transgender troops to face ISIS because they're tougher, they're meaner, they're better fighters. And the military is not about fighting anymore. It never was. It was about fighting in the past. But under Obama, the military is not about fighting. It's about social engineering. It doesn't matter if they can drive a tank, fly a plane, or drive a ship. It doesn't matter if they can fire a gun. It matters how good they look in high heels. And stockings. That's what we need in the military. That's what we need. What else can I read to you on the Savage Nation? Here are the winning essays in the Savage Scholarship Contest. Some of you actually bothered clicking on and read them. And they're pretty good. They should give you some hope for the future. There's an awful lot of young people out there who really know what America is. And they wrote the essays and they won. They have names. There's the names of the winners and their essays are there. You should read them, and you just want to hear negative stuff. Nobody will link any of these uh, articles. They're, they're too. See, these kids should have been invited to the White House if we had a patriotic president. We should have had a president said, "You know what? You just won a scholarship for what it means to be an American." They're beautiful, savage. Gave you a scholarship of twenty thousand each. We read them. We love it. They're the hope for the. F Instead, he goes to a prison and releases drug dealers and writes them personal letters. You believe this? Can you believe this? Instead of going to the winners of the Savage Scholarship Contest, he goes to drug dealers and wraps his arms around them. Aristotle's work upon methods of thinking carried the science of logic to a level in which it remained for 1,500 years or more. Did you know that? You didn't know that. Up until medieval times. Aristotle's work on methods of thinking carried the science of logic to a new level and it remained there for 1,500 years or more. And that's when Greece was great. Now, since then, I don't know what they've exported. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I mean, ever since Aristotle, I've seen nothing. Maybe Zorba the Greek came out of Greece. And uh, some music, music, admittedly music, yes, some music. I can't think of a Greek product I use. I'd like to. Kalamata olives, okay. But California's matched them in the olive world. A lot of dentists went into the olive business 20 years ago for tax, tax reasons. So they have a lot of olives in California. I, I don't like the uh, small black olives because I almost broke a tooth once on the uh, on the pit. Dangerous. Dangerous. An olive with a pit? Wow. That's like a pit bull without teeth.
I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Michael, do you think it makes sense to lock so many people alone in tiny cells for 23 hours a day for months, sometimes for years at a time? That is not going to make us safer. That's not going to make us stronger. And if those individuals are ultimately released, how are they ever going to adapt? So there's the president pandering to the most dangerous of all prisoners, those who were so dangerous, not only to other prisoners, but to the guards that they're put into solitary confinement. And here he is pandering to them. Not one word to the family of the uh, young lady assassinated by the illegal alien in San Francisco. Not one word out of this man's mouth. Again, a sympathy for the devil wherever you turn. Now, he's doing it for one reason only. He sees a body of a million prisoners, and they can all vote when they get out. Right there, there's an election. you got to remember something. He's a community organizer. He's not a president. He's never been a president. He doesn't understand president means leading all the people, not just a small segment of the people. He is still a community organizer, interested only in a fragmented portion of the population, meaning his base, period. He doesn't care about the nation and the interests of the nation. Now, why would he go and pander to those on uh, in solitary confinement? What, what's that about? They're all innocent? You mean the guards are fascists and mean and they put them there because they want to just punish people, Mr. Obama? Are you nuts? Ask a guard what it's like to work around dangerous felons who have killed other guards. Where would you put them, you schmuck? You'll be a guard for a day, put on a uniform and see what it's like. Walking around there like a genius. A genius, you don't know anything. You don't know what the hell you're talking about half the time. Iran is now our friend. People on, uh, on death row are our friend. Cops are no good. Thugs are good. Burn Philadelphia down over one guy who died in a police van. We still don't even know why. Freddie Gray in Baltimore. That was his sympathy. He gave a speech about Freddie Gray. Suddenly he was a Boy Scout and a Medal of Honor winner. Not one word about uh, Steinle. So everything this guy does is an affront to people with intelligence and decency. There's not a decent bone in Obama's body. Everything he does is aimed at the uh, other side. Shall I say the other side of reality, or what is this here? Borders language culture, 855-407-282. You can, oh, my God, dial into the show. Look at this. I finally got one or two callers who are making sense, like Douglas from FTL on three. I'll get to you in a minute. Or Alex on ABC, I'll get to you in a minute. Or BAP or KSFO. Or... But, you know, we'll do it in the next hour. And that's it. So I'm going to take a quick break. Then I'll be back. Two more hours. Be here, be nowhere. Got to eat lunch during the show now. I get very faint if I don't. I'm trying different styles of show. In the beginning, I wouldn't eat lunch. And I would remain on a high wire for three hours. Then I started eating heavy lunches. And it would make me drowsy. Now I'm doing a hybrid. It's not working. It's either or. I'm an extremist. I need to have either no lunch or so much food where I'm falling asleep. I'll go for the latter during the break. During the break and see what happens when I come back. See if I can even, if I'll be comatose or whatever. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Let's follow the growing number of our states and cities and private companies who've decided to ban the box on job applications so that former prisoners who have done their time and are now trying to get straight with society have a decent shot in a job interview. 
And if folks have served their time and they've re-entered society, they should be able to vote. Remember this, he's a community organizer. He's never been a president of all the people. He is a community organizer who is aiming his rhetoric only at his constituency, in this case, prisoners. Let's see, check on those who burnt Maryland to the ground. Uh, check on illegal aliens who killed people in the streets. Check, got that one covered. Let's see, Iranian terrorists, check that one. Let's see, felons now, check that one. So he's a constant affront to law-abiding citizens who are craving law and order. This man appeals to the opposite. To the opposite, it's unbelievable to me. He rewards a lawless terrorist state like Iran with a nuclear bomb, no matter what he's telling you. And look what this guy is doing. He knows that he's got to go before Congress and then go through the machinations and the the machinations of a democracy, the, the rudiments of it that we have here. And what does he do today? He goes to the UN and sells those gangsters on his deal with Iran. What does he expect the gangsters in the UN to do? They hate Israel. They hate the U.S. So naturally, they're his ally. They see the world the way he does. The U.S. is evil. Israel's evil. And everyone else is good. But look what he's doing. He's sidestepping Congress again. It shows you how lawless this guy is. This is lawlessness, by the way, what he's doing. Lawlessness. Now it gets even better. As I told you, he's not going to be satisfied until he brings the whole house down before he goes. Now we got the first lady speaking to girls again. She doesn't stop either. Between spending tens of millions of dollars on shopping trips, blowing federal taxpayer money like it's her own, abusing the office of the first lady like I've never seen in my life, never. Now she gives a speech that you're not going to believe. Listen to clip 14. Think about what it would be like to see your brothers, your male cousins, all going off every day to school while you were stuck at home. Imagine having to drop out of school at the age of 12 or 13 and marry some man in his 40s or 50s and then have your first baby by the time you're 14 or 15. So any chance you had to study the subjects that you love, math, English, art, science, Mm. All of that would be gone. And all those dreams you had for your career, all those ambitions, those are gone too. Now, if she was speaking to a group of Muslim girls in a Muslim school, it would make sense. Marrying a man at 50, uh, if you're 12. Who is she speaking to? Remarks by the First Lady at the Girl Up Leadership Summit? Are they both nuts? Is somebody doctoring their food? Who are they speaking to? I don't even understand what country I'm living in anymore. Who is she talking to? I don't know who this is addressed to, but it's apparently to a, a Girl Up Leadership Summit. It gets even better. Listen to 15 now. I want you to think about how does that reality make you feel? Heartbroken, angry, overwhelmed. Well, well when you're trying to pick an issue that you want to tackle, that's a pretty good place to start with your emotion. In fact, oh. I think you should always start oh with whatever issue moves you. Oh, boy. Moves you right here. That's oh. the best way to know how to invest your time. Is she crazy? She's repeating what, the rhetoric of the 60s. What, if it feels good, do it? Why not do it in the road? Don't use your brains. Just use your emotion. That's really what they need to hear from the first lady. You want to have sex? Go ahead. Why not do it in the road? Have a baby at 13. Why not do it in the road? If it feels good, do it. Just what they need to hear. Listen to 16 now from the First Lady. And that's what I'm going to be doing on this issue of girls' education for my remaining time as First Lady and oh, beyond. God help us all. I'm going to be oh, traveling to all. other developed countries and Meaning urging a, a, them to a join goggle, the United right. States and in investing yeah, yeah, yeah. more in girls' education. Yeah, yeah, or have shopping And I'll also trips, be traveling it. to developing countries. Right, more and shopping. highlighting how those investments are actually transforming girls' lives yeah, okay, on the ground. Right. And I'm going to be using every tool that I can, mm -hmm. media, social media, whatever it mm -hmm. takes to get the word out. What word? What is she talking about? I, I'm asking you, I'm a reasonably well-read man. I consider myself reasonably knowledgeable about politics. I am listening to this babble. I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know who she's talking to. Imagine having dropped out of school 12 or 13 and marrying a man in his 40s or 50s. What is she talking about? Who... 
Is this to a Muslim girls' school in London? No. Who is she talking to? So now it ends in clip 17. You got to hear this one. When I look into the eyes of girls like you and around the world, I say this all the time. I see myself in you. I see my daughter. Turn it off. This is you. such rubbish. It's beyond belief. Here is a woman who grew up in a, a middle class family. Everything was given to her on a silver platter. She never struggled a day in her life. Ask people to know the background. Again, making believe she's down with the people. What? In the, how much of this rubbish can we take from these two? Well, there's a lot of months left. Look what look what uh, Bush did in the last few months. That'll give you some idea what they're going to do to us. So he's at the UN now selling the deal with Iran. Here's another one. This is amazing. Did you, you know the story I broke yesterday on the show? The Boston police captain, son, became a terrorist who likes ISIS. And I asked you, remember I gave you a contest, guess the police captain's ethnicity? And I, like, sh stunned you. I said, you immediately assume he's a Muslim. He isn't. An Italian from Boston, no less. It was shocking, really. I know that. So here's the Boston cop's alleged terrorist son on ABC News. you got to hear this entire clip, too. Listen. In your mind, then, is all of the United States an enemy? Yes. And every person... Yes, it's unjust. The people that you see being executed are criminals. They're criminals. They're the lowest of the low. The group that calls themselves ISIS or ISIL, they're doing a good thing? Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're doing a good thing. And what part of what they're doing is good? Like, what, what's good? They're implementing the Sharia. They're freeing people from oppression. But now, the Islamic State they comes in, they come in with guns. They don't come in peacefully. They come in with guns, and they come it, in with knives, and they, they take people's heads off, and they, they kill people. They That's, kill enemies. They kill oppressors. Well, those you are understand. This is the young Chicolo. Can you imagine this? The father must be di dying inside to have raised a, 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 a child like this. They're killing enemies, you hear? They're doing a good thing, he says. The people that, he says, the people they're executing are criminals. That would include, I guess, women and children and all members of non-Muslim tribes or religion, rather. Blowing up churches is a good thing. Obviously, this Chicolo is a brainwashed you know, loser of the lowest order. There's definitely a psychological damage here. There's no question in my mind he's a loser. But you have to understand something. Losers can be very dangerous. You can't write him off just because he's a loser. Who do you think Hitler used to run the concentration camps? Do you think that they were all sterling geniuses? Hitler used people like this psychologically damaged loser, Chicolo, in my opinion, to torture the people and execute them in the concentration camps. So that's who ISIS is appealing to around the world, the bottom of the barrel, the losers. And in this case, it's a Boston cop's a son, which is unbelievable to me how far the propaganda has gone that they can reach uh, weak-minded nuts like this in this, uh, in this way. It's unbelievable to me. All right, let's go to one quick caller, line number three, Douglas on WFTL, line three. Go ahead, please, Douglas, what's your point? You were talking about most wars are started over money and power, and you also mentioned Pericles. And it reminds me in ancient Greece how they had a process called ostracism, where if somebody was a toxic person, they could vote to send them away for 10 years. They wouldn't lose any of their money, any of their possessions. And when they came back, they had no stigma. But what it would do is get that toxic element out of society, out of the military, out of commerce, and give them a chance to right the ship. As you watch the people that hang around Washington, a Charlie Rangel, uh, a Mitch McConnell, a John Boehner, uh, people that just are only for themselves, they need to be removed from the process so the process can heal itself. Yes, but th you're talking about a people's court. You're talking about a people's trial of the criminal political class that has run this country off the rails, that would permit a man like Barack Obama to do what he's doing on a daily basis without any opposition because they're interested only in feathering their own nest and the nests of their supporters, like McConnell with the coal. McConnell with the coal deal. McConnell with the coal deal. Remember he was given coal by the Supreme Court in exchange for gay marriage? Do you remember that one? Yes. Okay. And how is that going to happen? How are we going to remove these gangsters from office? Tell me how, when they're so entrenched and they own the, and the only uh, the government media complex. How do you remove them from office? 
I think the only way is that the way it was done then is it took a vote by the people. So if public opinion was so much against somebody that they were doing something wrong, they would be removed from... Well, we did. We voted in November. Look who we got. We got a worse Obama and a worse Republican Party. So So I don't have the immediate answer for you. If I did, I'd be a genius, which I'm not. I'm a great talk show host, and that's about it. But I would say this. The only power we the people have is ridicule right now. The more we ridicule Obama, Michelle Obama, McConnell, Boehner, Republican establishmentarians, the vermin in the media, the more we ridicule them, the better and more powerful we become. Do you know that? Don't think that they're not subject to ridicule. They they hate it. It drives them crazy because they have all the power in the world. The one thing they don't have is the respect of the people. And if we deny them the respect and we ridicule them, we are asserting ourselves as citizens. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, so Obama blew it today. He had a press conference to, uh, to peddle the Iranian nuclear deal. Because it's not doing as well as he thought, except in terrorist uh, quarters. So he fields a question from CBS White House correspondent Major Garrett, who asks him about the four Americans held captive in Iran and why he didn't seek their release during these negotiations. Listen to the interchange, Major Garrett to Obama. Play it, please. As you well know, there are four Americans in Iran, three held on trumped-up charges, according to your administration, one whereabouts unknown. Can you tell the country, sir, why you are content with all the fanfare around this deal to leave the conscience of this nation and the strength of this nation unaccounted for in relation to these four Americans. And last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said under no circumstances should there be any relief for Iran in terms of ballistic missiles or conventional weapons. It is perceived that that was a last-minute capitulation in these negotiations. Many in the Pentagon feel you've left the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff hung out to dry. Could you comment? I got to give you credit, Major, for how you craft those uh, those questions. For the, the notion that I am content, as I celebrate with American citizens languishing in Iranian jails, Major, that that's not. You whisper to him. Hold it. Stop there. And you should know better. Did you hear his advisor whisper to him? Did anyone hear that, Robert? Did you hear that on the sound? He was about to attack the reporter when one of his handlers whispered what he should say. I want you to start with Obama answering Major Garrett, and I want all of my listeners to listen to the advisor whispering in his ears. Listen. Oh, you need time. Okay. Got to restart. All the way back to Garrett? I hope not. No, I don't want to play it then. Forget it. We have, an, we have a faulty system here in the studio. It's not up to the standards of my show, and it needs to be fixed immediately. I need you to go back to the spot that I need, not to the beginning like the dummies that didn't hear it, okay? He says, I've got to give you credit for how you craft those questions. The notion that I'm content as I celebrate with American citizens languishing in Iranian jails, Major, that's nonsense and you should know better. He was told to say that. You could hear the whispering. And he says, I've met with the families of some of these folks. Nobody is content. And our diplomats and our teams are working diligently to try to get them out. Oh, Really? Oh, yeah, John Kerry is just hopping to get them out. Now, if the question is why we did not tie the negotiations to their release, think about the logic that that creates. What logic? What logic does that create? They're human beings, which mean nothing to him. All he wants is to deal with Iran. Obama scolds CBS's Major Garrett for question about U.S. hostages in Iran. Let's listen to the response in the Savage Nation. I got to give you credit, Major, for how you craft those uh, those questions. For the, the notion that I am content as I celebrate with American citizens languishing in Iranian jails. Did you hear it, Major? That uh, that's Did nonsense. You they and knew you he was going to blow his temper. I've met with the families of some of those folks. The handlers. Nobody's content. Right, you got, did you hear this? He was about to blow a fuse, and the people who control him, the controllers whispered to him how to answer. I can't believe it. God, I wish I had somebody here in the radio studio all these years 
whispering to me when I was about to go over the air. I would love that. I might even be uh, the president of uh, Carvel Stand if I did that. I don't really need anyone whispering to me. Because I rarely make mistakes. If I do, I pay, believe me, I pay dearly for them. He doesn't pay dearly for anything. Doesn't matter. Doesn't deal with Iran. And by the way, look, I told you before, he, he's not alone in thinking it's a good deal. Your hero, Ron Paul, who I think is a certifiable nut, uh, praised the Iran nuke deal and says critics misinterpreted it. Can we play the Ron Paul in clip three and four, you won't believe this. Listen. There's something to be said about moving in the directions of at least talking to people uh, instead of saying, all right, you're scoundrels, we'll keep our $100 billion we've taken from you and all options are on the table. Like, if you don't do what we tell you, we're liable to use our nuclear weapons against you. The tone has been changed. I think it's to our benefit and it's to the benefit of world peace. I don't think now you can Ron find Paul. many times yeah. where they literally lie uh, about what they're doing. They have no troops, uh, literally troops. They're involved, uh, you know, uh, in other parts of the world. But they, they haven't invaded other countries. I mean, we oh have boy. troops in 150 countries, oh and we have weapons all over the place. Oh I think our foreign policy is basically driven oh by the military-industrial complex, and if they can sell something, they will keep stirring the oh pot. Boy. Now, how does Ron Paul differ from Hillary Clinton? How does Ron Paul differ from that nut from New York? That crazy man. The soapbox guy whose name I forget. He doesn't. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. And uh, with respect to the, uh, the Medal of Freedom, uh, there's no precedent for revoking uh, a medal. Uh, we don't have that mechanism. Um, and as you know, I tend to make it a policy not to comment on the specifics of uh, of cases where there might still be, if not criminal, then civil uh, issues involved. Um, I'll say this. Uh, if you give a woman, or a man for that matter, without uh, his or her knowledge, a drug, and then have sex with that person without consent, that's rape. And uh, I think this country, any civilized country, should have no tolerance for rape. Well, we all agree with that. Who would disagree with that? But why is he chiming in on the attack on Bill Cosby? since the man has not yet been charged with a crime. Why is he ganging up on Bill Cosby? This is what I'm saying to you. You see how bad this is getting? How cowardly this really is? I would say that I don't know whether Bill Cosby did anything bad. We don't know what he really did. Do we really know? Has he gone to trial? The lynch mob already has hung him from a tree, mainly white liberals. Why have white liberals rushed to hang this black man without a trial? And why are the so-called liberals... So anxious to attack Bill Cosby, of all people. He's the worst man on earth? Is he the worst man on earth? The worst man on earth. The worst man on the planet is Bill Cosby, with no trial. So now even the president's chiming in to curry favor with the radical feminists who are out to get this man. I don't know what he did. I have no idea whether he did it or he didn't do it. There's a lot of lies out there. He said, she said. We don't know if these women are just doing it for a little, you know, money, a little payola. But I refuse to get into this uh, if I haven't seen a trial. Why, why is the president rushing the judgment on Bill Cosby? Why? Because it's an easy shot. Very easy shot, that's all. But that's not a big topic. I don't want to have anyone to call on that one. It doesn't really matter to me. He didn't release the hostages. He didn't get anything out of the deal. He gave up everything and he got nothing. WMAL, Anna, welcome to the Savage Nation. Anna, what's your, what's your position today on any topic? Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to speak about Obama. You know, he seems to be an expert at uh, lighting the fuse on both sides and then watching it burn. We've seen this both uh, domestically and pretty much overseas, obviously, with the Middle East and the nuke war agenda he set in place. And, uh, you know, basically the world's on fire with American people in the, the middle and as far as the domestic, we're dealing with the war on, you know, race and religion, 
you know, the Obamacare, home ownership, home ownership for all, which ends up being home ownership for the few. And, you know, the list goes on and on. And it's just such an outrage to hear him speak with such arrogance. And he's so condescending. And he's not a man of the people like he should be. No, no, he is. The condescension and the arrogance is something that's hard to bear. It's never been seen in a modern American president. The arrogance and the condescension is something that's nauseating, frankly, because it's built on a very thin, thin background. He didn't find the cure for polio, did he, before he became president? He was nothing but a low-life community organizer before they made him a senator. Then what? Then what? Then they pushed him into the White House by manipulating the voters, manipulating the, the figures, getting white people to feel guilty if they voted against them. They ran the moron McCain against them, who basically shot himself in the foot and told you to elect Obama. We know what happened. And they did it twice now. Now, if he did a sterling job, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But how do, how do you compute this? We're ridiculing him for the deal with Iran. And yet Ron Paul, a hero of libertarians, says he's right in doing the nuke deal. How, how does that compute to you? It's total insanity, in my opinion. Then, then so Ron Paul is as insane as uh, the liberals? In this case, yes. Right. That's right. Ron Paul is a lunatic. He is no different than Bernie Sanders or any other left-wing lunatics. And I don't think he helped Rand Paul's campaign. Rand Paul's not getting anywhere anyways and not even getting out of the starting gate. He's finished. I don't think there's enough telephone books in the, in, in, in the city to bring him back to the status he needs in order to, uh, to even run. Can I send you a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca? I have, I think, six left to give away. That's all that's left in the warehouse. It's sold out. I don't know if they're going to go back to press, but I'm going to give you one of the countdown to Mecca's that I have to give away if you'll stay on the line. KCMO. That's in St. Louis or Kansas City, depending on where you live. That is such a, you know, I, you know sometimes I read a, a station call letters. like It has such power to me. Because remember, I grew up as a, as a local talk show host. One station, very important to me. It was, it was my whole pride, that one station, KSFO. I reveled in it. I loved it. I still do. I love being on a local station. I love it. But KCMO was always known as a blowtorch of the Midwest. Paul, welcome to the Savage Nation from KCMO. What's on your mind? You know, hey, my comments mainly is before I, I would have ever talked about an Iran nuclear deal, my first point would have been you release these four hostages and we'll go from there. And if you don't release them, I'm walking out the door. Then you operate from a position of strength. And right. So why did Obama throw them overboard? Why do you think he did that, Carrie and that left-wing fanatic social worker from uh, uh, Emily's List, who did the deal, by the way, and her picture's on michaelsavage.com. It was not Carrie who did the hard negotiating. It was a left-wing fanatic, the same woman who worked for Carter and gave Korea, North Korea, the right to develop nuclear weapons, did this deal. Why didn't she want these hostages released? Because it, it's, I don't know. It, it just, Nobody it, knows. Nobody knows. It's that simple. WJR, Jim, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hello, Michael. This is uh, Jim from Michigan. And uh, I, first of all, I want to start out by taking conservative commentators, and you're amongst that group, to task. I've been listening to you folks for a couple of decades now. And things have done nothing but going, gone downhill. I don't hold you responsible. Well, if you put me in the category with all the others, you're starting off on the wrong foot from my point of view. But please make your main point. What have we done to disappoint you? I, you haven't won any elections. You, you haven't been able to persuade the I, I don't understand where you're coming from. You're blaming me for the fact that the Democrats are winning? They are definitely winning, and it doesn't make this. I agree with you. I understand, but why are you blaming us? They're rigging the vote. They're bringing in illegal aliens. They're having people vote multiple times. So why are you blaming us for what's happening? What? what where are you coming from? Are you a liberal who's trying to put down conservatives? Where are you coming from? Dr. Savage, I read Conscious of a Conservative, Goldwater's book, when I was 12 years old. I've been a conservative, and I'm now... Well, fine, I'm a Goldwater conservative. What is, what is it 
about my message that is incorrect. Borders language and culture is not something that your hero Goldwater would have approved of? We're, we're on the same page, probably 75%. But well, of course. So what's your complaint then? I'll give you an example. Specifically, ridicule. Ridicule will get us nowhere. It's a waste. You're 100% wrong. You are a hugging. They're demeaning, and they deserve every ounce of ridicule we can give them. It's the one thing that Obama doesn't get enough of. Dr. Savage, that's fine. You know, I agree with you on that. But the, the vote him out of office. We did that in November, didn't we? And look what we got. Your friend Boehner and McConnell the Gobbler, who, who did it all for the Kentucky coal job. All right, we, we've had enough of this. I really have a major fundamental question here on this. What is this, Wednesday? People are getting so worked up, including me. It's the summer. Relax. So he gave the nuke to Iran. What's the big deal? And so he's releasing felon and drug dealers from prison. Relax. It's your summer. Go and barbecue. Go grill a little bit. Cool off a little bit. Just relax. Relax like him. The man is on a war path against America's middle class, conducting a jihad against the middle class, and I'm supposed to sit here and just do a show and, and have a good time. No, not going to do it. I take the job seriously. Some days, not as much as others. Some days, more than, other, than, I, than I should. Today is in between. It's not bad. And that's because I didn't overeat for lunch. It just, it just arrived. It took an hour to get here, so I haven't been able to narcotize myself with food to slow down. But the fact is, if you want to do politics, we could do it from today until tomorrow. And what good is it going to do us? At least we can express ourselves. I know someone who's very intelligent who said, I've given up on the political process because no matter what we do, it doesn't matter. Obama's going to get his agenda no matter what we say, no matter what we do. He's going to nail us to a cross, all of us. And I ask you again, what do you fear this demonic community organizer will do next in his jihad against the middle class? And Lanny on WBOB has an answer. Lanny on WBOB radio, go ahead, please. What's on the community organizer's short list next? Reparations. That's the one card he has not played that he's holding in his hand is reparations. Now, how is he going to enact reparations? Who's going to pay them? <laughs> Who do you think is going to pay them? Who's paying the bill now? I understand, but what is the legal mechanism for this community organizer to steal more money from the hard-working middle class to pay reparations to blacks who were never enslaved? Tell me who's gonna, how he's gonna do that. What's he gonna do? Make it an executive order that what every white person's gonna pay a hundred thousand dollars to who? Megan, excuse me. The legal mechanism is what he's doing today. Exactly, ignoring the law. Ignoring every bit of the law, the Constitution. Well, I've covered this issue of reparations many, many times. And, of course, no one today is, is, uh, has ever suffered slavery, ever. And nobody listening to the show has ever kept a slave. So the whole point is absurd. And if the uh, African-American community wants reparations, boy, we have a lot of answers to that question. How about the billions and billions of dollars that have been paid already in other forms? Where'd that money go? The point I'm trying and moreover, who, who, who should receive reparations oprah winfrey should rich african-americans get reparations or only poor and what money what number do you cut it off at and by the way should africans who've just arrived in america over the last five years who've never suffered slavery also receive money just based on their race or is it limited only to african-americans whose families go back to the slave days it's a very complicated question and by the way who pays the reparations all americans including me whose grandfather was an immigrant who came here when he was 13 years old, and I was, uh, I'm was i the grandson of an uh, son of an immigrant, by the way. I owe reparations for what reason? Well, because my grandfather worked hard enough to dry, die a heart, heart attack at 49 and never kept a slave? I wouldn't pay 10 cents. I'd go to jail before I paid a dime to these gangster criminals. I won't pay a, ten, a penny. Put me in jail before I pay a nickel in reparations. Not one cent comes out of my pocket to this gang. I'll be back or I'm going to say something I really regret. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You want to talk about reparations? We can do it. 
many people are asking, what is this community organizing going to do to the middle class next? He's checked off his punch list, including the biggest ticket item, which is deal with Iran to give him the right to develop a nuclear weapon and get nothing in return. Because he got nothing in return, nothing, going to zero. Nada, nothing. He was put in office for a number of reasons. This was the big one. That's the big kahuna, give Iran the nuclear weapon, change the entire world balance, throw Israel under the bus, show Netanyahu he's a bigger man than him, show a real war hero like Netanyahu that this community organizer is a bigger macha than Netanyahu. Typical left-wing punk, always wanting to show that they're better than better men than them. There's an ego here that's beyond comprehension. You could see it in his demeanor, his arrogance his disconnection from reality, but I'm not a psychologist. I'm a talk show host. So what's next on the agenda? What's on the punch list? Well, a man just called and said reparations. And I am saying to you that there's no mechanism for reparations that have already not been paid. Welfare, you name it. Reparations have already been paid to the nth degree, and what did it get us? Take a look at Baltimore. You'll see what it got us. That's all. So... Who will pay the reparations? Those descendants of people who kept slaves? Well, that would be logical. They benefited. Who are they? Uh, and who would receive the reparations? Those whose ancestors were slaves, including billionaires like Oprah Winfrey, for example? They also are entitled to, to reparations? And would it be based only on race? Would Africans who've just come here in the na last few years who've never suffered from slavery also be entitled to reparations? Of course not. They never suffered from the trauma of slavery, so you can't give them reparations. And who in America should be billed for these reparations? Well, I don't know. Maybe if you really looked at it, you would go to Africa, and you would find the descendants of African families whose ancestors dealt in slavery, the black Africans now. Or you'd go to Saudi Arabia, and you'd go to the Arabian families whose ancestors dealt as slave masters, slave traders, rather, in Africa. And you could say they owe us reparations. See, see how far you get in Saudi Arabia. Or you can go to Portugal and Spain, and you can go to the families, the descendants of families that dealt in the slave trade, and you could approach them, see how far you get in Portugal or Spain. No, you see, see, you can't get anywhere in Saudi Arabia, Portugal or Spain, or in Africa for that matter, but you can go after the white middle class because the white middle class is weak. You can do anything you want to them. Look how far you've gotten already with your screaming race in a crowded nation, huh? Keep, keep it up. Just keep it up. Keep pushing. See how far you get by pushing and pushing and pushing. And see how many other twisted maniacs come out of the closet. The weak ones whose mind snap. You keep pushing and you're going to wind up with the whirlwind. That's what you're going to get. So I don't think that he's going to push reparations just before Hillary goes for office, by the way. And I think she's been anointed in advance, if you can believe it. By what I see going on, unless Trump is for real, which I hope he is, and he runs and he could win. He'd win, by the way. If he runs, he wins. He'd win. By the way, even the poor would vote for Trump. You don't know that. Even Hispanics who come here to work would vote for him. Because the one thing everyone respects is hard work and money. And he has that. And he built it on his own. And so, as I said to you, even immigrants respect people with power and money. They'd rather have somebody with money running the country than some socialist who's going to take away what they've earned through taxation. So don't be so sure that only the rich would vote for him. I think he could win. Okay, another big hour right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. 855-407-282. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is our number three of the Savage Nation. We've been talking about a lot of the topics of the day. Ron Paul praising the Iran nuclear deal. 
He sounds just like Bernie Sanders. Uh, Barack Obama uh, talking to prisoners the day after talking to the terrorist nation of Iran and giving them a nuclear weapon on a silver platter. You know, that's what it is. Yeah, and peaceful use is my eye. We know what the game is. And we're not satisfied with that. Now he's talking to prisoners now. And he wants them released. So he releases more uh, drug dealers in one day through clemency or whatever they call it than pr the previous three presidents. 46 drug offenders. And he vows more commutations. And we're talking about uh, reparations. Because I've asked people what you think this community organizer will do before he leaves us alone. What, what will he do next? How much more damage can he do to the middle class? So someone said, I'll bet he, he demands reparations for black people. And I went off ballistically because I said I'd go to jail before I paid another dime. See, I've paid reparations. I have paid reparations because I've been victimized through high taxation. I've been victimized through affirmative action where highly unqualified people were given positions I deserved. Uh, you, you get the picture. You kind of know how it works, huh? If you, uh, you, you kind of know how it works, don't you? So uh, I said I'd go to prison before I paid a dime. So what else do you think this community organizer will do before he leaves office? He'll do anything he can to uh, get even with the middle class he despises for some reason. What are they doing? Why do they hate the middle class so much? Why is she agitating? Why is he agitating? They, they haven't done well enough in America? Barry from Honolulu didn't do so well. And Michelle suffered as a young girl? How'd she suffer? I love she gives speeches. She was born on the South Side. I had black people call and say that's rubbish. She came from a middle class family. Never worked a day in her life. What is she, yet, what's she complaining about? What? It's the game. It's the racket. It's how... Uh, but, Shop, Shopton's done it. Jackson, they all do it. Anyone in that business does it that way. Read Animal Farm and you know how it works. WABC, Tom, you're calling on the reparations issue. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, hi. So also, um, you have to consider the genetic aspect. I mean, many of the African-Americans today are of mixed race. And so, and much of... Wait, wait, I'm sorry. okay, of mixed race. So what, they should, should only get a certain... A minimal number of reparations, or? No, no. well, there's a further problem. Some of the um, Africans are also of, have genetics from the people who enslaved them. So who do they pay? Themselves? I mean, it's a ridiculous concept as far as reparations. Correct. In other words, if you want to demand reparations, go to Africa and go with the African families who benefited from the slave trade because the, the descendants still live there. Well, that's a possibility. But however, however the Americans are of mixed genetics, and and so they're not entitled to anything. Uh, um, my relatives, my genetics, never enslaved anyone. So, so why should I have... Yeah, to but I've, he I've heard the radicals argue that it doesn't matter simply because you're white, you owe us something, because you benefited from, uh, from slavery. I've heard them throw that in my face, which is so ludicrous, it's, it's not even worth discussing. Well, but it's complete nonsense, because... Even, yeah, but that's what the radical left keeps pushing. I'm surprised that Hillary Clinton hasn't come out for reparations yet. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be a winning uh, that'd be a winning campaign issue. Instead of all right, my friend. Uh, yeah, this will come up, Jim on WABC on the issue of reparations, so called. What's your point? Yes, Mike. That caller hit it right on the head with reparations, and the way that they're going to go about it is they're going to incorporate it into the tax. They're going to have a section on the tax form where you check. Uh, black, Hispanic, or white devil, and they'll give uh, either a tax credit, a tax refund, or a tax break to the black, white, well, so-called minorities. That's the way they're going to go about doing it. Well, I wonder if they get away with that. I really wonder if that wouldn't go to the Supreme Court. Well, we have I right really, I don't think they could get away with it, honestly. And so there'll be many, many arguments uh, for reparations by the uh, class that lives off agitation. But the arguments against reparations are so powerful. Now, the number one argument that the, the, the uh, so-called civil rights activists will use will be the Japanese, who worked very, very successfully to rip reparations for the World War II injustices. They're going to use that model. 
And th that's a flawed model, by the way, which I'll, I'll deal with on another day. There are many legal arguments against reparations, incidentally, and I think we need to stick to the legal arguments. You've got to understand that there are those proposing compensation provided to the descendants of enslaved people in the United States to uh, pay back for the coerced and uncompensated labor their ancestors allegedly performed over centuries. And so some demand monetary payments, some want land, and uh, it's a very difficult argument on both sides. Nobody knows how this would work, but if anyone's going to pull it off, it would be the community organizer. He could possibly pull it off. If he could get away with giving a nuclear weapon to Iran, which is what he did yesterday, well, what's to stop him from pushing this? And so I think that this could come up. He's got a lot of time on his hands between now and November uh, uh, 2016. Oh, a lot of time on his hands, and he's been agitating the population quite a bit now. He didn't even take a, br a breather. You'd think after the Iran deal, a man would take a vacation, go and play golf for a couple of weeks isn't that enough for one man, this legacy? No. The next day he's in prison already talking about uh, releasing him from jail. Now, this idea of reparations is not a new idea. Before the Civil War even ended, General Sherman issued an order in South Carolina, and he wanted 40 acres and the loan of an army mule set aside for each former slave family. Did you, did you know that's where 40 acres and the mule came from? Even this order was never carried out. Did you know that? But after the war, some in Congress passed laws requiring confiscation of former Confederate property to provide the ex-slaves with 40 acres and a mule. And yet in 1866, President Andrew Johnson vetoed this legislation. Then the next push for reparations occurred at the turn of the century. Black organizations lobbied Congress to provide pensions for former slaves and their children. Bill was actually introduced in the U.S. Senate in 1894 that would have granted direct payments of up to 500 bucks to all ex-slaves plus monthly pensions ranging from $4 to $15, died in congressional committees. And then the pension movement died with the onset of World War I. The arguments for reparations for African-American descendants, or descendants of slave rather, was revived during the 1960s. 1969, James Foreman, the head of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, proclaimed a black manifesto, demanded $500 million from American churches and synagogues for their role in perpetuating slavery before the Civil War. Black radical nationalist organizations, the Black Panther Party, black Muslims, also demanded reparations. 1980s, new call arose for black reparations. So, 1989, goes on and on and on. Then, Representative Conyers... Emphasis on the first three letters of his last name. Introduced Bill H.R. 3745 in November 1989. And it was again uh, a demand for reparations, but this bill failed to make it to a House vote. But Conyers did not give up. He keeps reintroducing the bill. The question really is, why does anyone deserve reparations? Because there are no black slaves living today. Slavery ended more than 160 years ago. And let me remind you, at the cost of several hundred thousand lives lost in the Civil War, mainly white men who died to free the slaves, if you want to put it that way. And why would you ask American taxpayers, many of them from families that came to the U.S. after slavery ended, to pay you a dime for the wrongs of slavery? It's crazy. Moreover, many blacks have succeeded quite well in American society without reparations. How do you figure that? You look at your president. Look how well he did. He didn't need reparations, did he? Look how far he got with affirmative action and white guilt. So who do you charge for this and who gets the money? Moreover, federal and state governments have already spent billions of dollars on social programs such as welfare, subsidized housing, that's called public housing, health care, employment development, affirmative action, education programs aimed at African Americans. And so why would you continue to push this idea that A, someone is owed something, and B, someone owes it? This would lead to huge unfairness, huge administrative costs. Let me ask you, who would receive reparations? All blacks or just descendants of slaves? Would wealthy African Americans receive payments like Oprah Winfrey? Would 
Bill Cosby receive payments? Would athletes receive payments? And if a fund was set up, who would manage it? Huh? Uh, who would manage this fund? Another government agency? How much would that cost? And what about those who were denied payments or not paid enough, call for even more reparations and file lawsuits? See, there are a few problems here if you actually use your mind. So you have to think very, very carefully before you rush to judgment. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Yeah, I don't know. This topic's a very, very important one because the community organizer is on a tear to destroy every semblance of decency left in America whether it be gay marriage or a deal with Iran or socialized medicine. Do I have to go off the list? He doesn't stop. Deal with Iran. The next day now he's pushing, uh, get prisoners now. Now his neck, not even a breather, just racing to push the left-wing fanaticism down our throats. And then the Pope's in the wings now. The commie Pope is coming to lecture about things he knows nothing about. A, a climate expert, you hear? The Pope's a climate expert. I, I had a whole show on this two weeks ago. The so-called encyclical on climate that was written for this communist pope was written by a left-wing fanatic who, A, doesn't believe in God. He practices Gaia. Number two, he would not permit any scientist who had evidence to the contrary. This is not science that the pope is engaging in. So we're living in very dangerous times. A, uh, a nightmare has been unleashed upon the world by this left-wing juggernaut raging from Rome to, to, uh, from Rome to Washington, this juggernaut of communism. So don't think it's over yet. They're just beginning. They're just beginning their assault. He's going to go for the gold very soon. KSFO, Jeff, go ahead, please. Topic, what's on your mind? Um, now, going with the reservations, when, um, you know, I'm part, part Yugoslavian, and, um, you know, the, the word slave comes from Yugoslavia. Uh, slave, obviously, Slav translated slave. So I'm a descendant of slaves. And when I talk to um, black people today, they're amazed that, that I'm a descendant of slaves because they think it only happens to black people. You know, there was the words, the, the, the reference to Slavic people refers to slavish people who were slaves. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So the right, Romans. You're right. Don't, don't try to educate people who don't know what the word education means. Don't tell them the Irish are treated lower than dogs when they came to America. Don't tell them about all the immigrant experiences of people who came here without a dime in their pocket, who busted their behinds to make a life for themselves so their children would have a better life. Don't tell them about that. Instead, feed them the rubbish that someone owes them something so they'll burn the city down again. Go ahead. Keep feeding them that rat trap garbage, that, that snake oil crap that somebody owes them something. So, I mean, my point is this. If, if I, I can't. I actually don't even want to talk about. It. I get it. I know that. I know what. I know what the history of slavery is. See, but I would rather turn the argument to existing slavery in the world right now, this minute, today, this second. I would rather focus on the young girls who are being enslaved by Muslims in the Middle East. Their families are are murdered, the father's murdered, the wife is raped, the mother's raped, and the daughter's sold into slavery. Right now. I'd like to hear Obama utter one word about the slavery ongoing right now in the Middle East. One word! That the Muslims are committing a crime against humanity in the Middle East against non-Muslims. I'd like to hear one word about the churches being burned. One word from this community organizing lying lout about the real tragedies going on in this world. One word from this phony. But you're not going to hear it. He sends letters to the numerous prisoners that he released, the drug dealers, no less, telling about what sterling people they are. He has yet to pick up a phone and call the family of the Steinle family here in San Francisco. Why is that? I wonder if it has anything to do with racial elements. Do you think that's possibly the issue? Could it be that your president is insensitive to racial issues? How is that possible? How is that even possible? 
WJR Roy on the reparations issue, fire away. Dr. Savage, I have never been one for appeasement, reparations, or racist and whatever. And if I never ever get accused of it again, they can have my money. It's worth it. Do you, do you <laughs> actually think that if you appeased the civil rights gangsters who are pushing reparations, do you actually think they would stop with that one payment? Do you think they would stop pushing the big lie about white privilege? Do you think they would stop humiliating the white children in America in our schools? Do you actually think so? I do not. I don't think so. That's part of the I wouldn't give them 10 cents. I would fight to my death before I'd pay one dime in reparations, and I would go to jail before I would pay one cent in reparations. That would be the last straw for me. If they ever try to pull that one off, I would lead a reparations rebellion in this country. No matter what my age would be, if I had the strength from God, I'd leave a reparation, I would lead a reparations rebellion against the government, and it would be an armed, an armed rebellion. I would, I would lead an armed rebellion against the government if they try to push that one down my throat after ripping off my life with affirmative action and welfare. I'm sick of it! And this gangster keeps getting away with it. This criminal in the White House, day in and day out, one lie after another. Imperious, arrogant, hostile, aimed only at the white middle class. Look at his policies and tell me who he's going after. Open your eyes, you idiots. And that's all I'm going to say on this issue right now. It will come up again, I guarantee you. So be ready for it when it does. Yes, indeed. I'll be right back. This is the Savage Day. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Just out in the New York Daily News, and it's only for the strong of heart. An 83-year-old Jewish woman, a religious woman, was raped for four and a half hours by a black male who made her swear on a Bible she wouldn't call the cops. Read in the Daily News. I know it's very embarrassing. It doesn't fit the narrative. I get it. But it just happened. Daily News. Left-wing newspaper. An elderly Brooklyn woman was forced by her brutal rapist to swear on a Jewish Bible that she would not call police or else he would kill her, the victim's family said Wednesday. A relative of the 82-year-old woman told the Daily News that the victim is bruised from head to toe after surviving the four-and-a-half-hour ordeal at her Brighton Beach home. Family members said she is not doing good. She has not slept since this happened. The battered woman told a relative that suspect Asa Roberts, 18, forced her to swear in a Jewish Bible that she would not send the police after him. He took advantage of the fact that she was religious, the relative told the news. He made her swear in a Jewish Bible that she wouldn't call the police, making fun of her. The victim was so terrified that she called a family member instead of the cops once the piece of human trash left around 6.30 a.m. Tuesday morning after raping her for four and a half hours. She even asked me afterward if she had broken her pledge, and I said, no, you didn't call the police. I called the police, the relative said, I feel bad. The rap sheet of the suspect... Asa Roberts included a 2006 arrest for a criminal sexual act one day before his 10th birthday against a victim under the age of 11. Police were also looking for him in connection with an assault on an NYPD transit cop. He was wanted on a bench warrant for a robbery arrest. See, this is the new New York under the Blasio. A fingerprint lifted from the victim's bedroom dress that was matched to the left middle finger of Roberts. The senior citizen's relative echoed police in saying that the victim went out of her way to treat the suspect politely, asking about the teen's family, even asking this piece of garbage if she could make this vermin a meal. She treated him like a grandson, and then he raped her right before he left. He is an animal, and he has to be taken off the streets. There was no reason to do what he did to her. Mr. Roberts remained on the run more than a day after the Tuesday morning rape. He was captured on video, both arriving and leaving from the victim's brick home. I guess Obama can send that to the Department of Justice to see if they can doctor it and show that it really wasn't him. After slipping inside through an unlocked door, the attacker hid in the victim's darkened bedroom before the assault began. The 82-year-old Jewish woman was punched, slammed into a wall, choked, and sexually assaulted before her attacker finally left her alone, departing with a bag of her dead husband's shirts and a stolen umbrella. 
He walked out of the house dangling an umbrella like nothing happened, and he had just raped her five minutes earlier, the family member said. Want to talk about reparations? Would you like to continue that discussion about, about the poor downtrodden minorities and the superior virtue of the oppressed? Would you like to talk about that? What would you like to talk about now? Oh, I know there's only one case. I realize it was not representative. I understand that. And I, we know that he'll pay for his crime. That's if he actually did it. I mean, the whole thing could be ginned up by the Russian mafia just to make blacks look bad. I get that as well. This could be a fake tape. I mean, turn it over to uh, Loretta Lynch. She'll prove that it's not him in the tape. And that it's really um, a Ku Klux Klan member dressed up to make uh, him look bad. Sure, the Ro Russian mafia did this in Brighton Beach. My only hope here is that there's justice, there's jailhouse justice. That's the only hope I have here, is that the criminal justice system, as you well know, you know what's coming. You know that all of the, all of the good liberal boys out there, some of whom are Jewish lawyers, I'm sorry it's embarrassing to say. Some of the best lawyers happen to be of uh, a certain uh, background. They're ready to represent him. They'll make it sound like he was a schoolboy and she came on to him. And he raped, she raped him. Before they get through with this case, they'll make the cop look like a stumble bum moron who broke the case. And they'll make the poor 82-year-old woman look like she invited him in for a rape. Well, that's what law is. I mean, they don't mean any harm by it. Their object is to just make sure that justice is done. And justice is served. You understand how that works. The object is to uh, represent their client to the best of their ability to twist and distort the truth. That's all. Rapist punch choke woman 82 made her swear on a Bible she wouldn't call the cops in a four-hour Brooklyn assault. How do you like that story? Can you believe this story? Didn't make it to your local paper yet? Didn't make it there yet, huh? Four and a half hours at a Brighton Beach home? I don't understand this. He he breaks into the apartment. They show him slipping inside uh, through an unlocked door. Hides in the victim's darkened bedroom before the assault began. And then what? She treats him like a grandson? You mean she didn't know he didn't rape her right away? She treated him politely when she saw him in the house? Asked about the teen's family? Asked if she could make the animal a meal? And then he raped her for four and a half hours, and then he beat her up. I guess that's what he does in his, in his uh, sick way. That's his idea of uh, sex. Slams her into a wall, punches her, chokes, and sexually assaults her. He should get the death penalty for this. First, they should take off his genitals. You know none of this is going to happen. None of this will happen. You know, you know what the results are going to be. He's a poor, innocent minority who was oppressed all of his life, and... Uh, he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, temporary insanity. Or you could just say this is nothing about race. They'd say this is just a sociopathic teenager who terrorized an old lady. But of course, if it was your mother or grandmother, uh, let's say it was, God forbid, a black 82-year-old grandmother raped by a white Ku Klux Klan member, I think Obama would get excited over it. He'd write a letter probably. You won't be hearing this case, about this case from the Justice Department. It's been forgotten already. Came out minutes ago. Minutes ago. Just came out minutes ago. And you're getting it on the Savage Nation. Rapist punch choke woman 82. Made her swear in a Jewish Bible she wouldn't call the cops in a four-hour Brooklyn assault. In Brighton Beach, no less, which is a home to a lot of Russian emigres, if you get the drift. I don't understand how... Um, well, I'll, I'll stop right there because I can't... Uh, Here's another one, if you'd like another little story. You want another little story to go with this one? Here's another little one, since we're talking about reparations. Man convicted of murdering a Holocaust survivor wins $3,500 in a lawsuit against New York City. A convicted murderer locked up for killing an elderly Holocaust survivor got a few thousand dollars last week after settling a lawsuit against the city. Ernest Madison cut a deal for $3,500 after claiming in a 2012 lawsuit that the Department of Correction Workers at Rikers Island deliberately ignored his suffering from a painful medical condition that affected his hands. And he sued Rikers Island. I wonder what kind of lawyer he got. So he sued Rikers Island. And as a result, he won. And here's a guy in jail for killing a Holocaust survivor. 
The Vermin lawyer who represented him sued originally for $10 million. Let me see if I can find the lawyer's name. I can pretty much guess who it is and who the judge is. I don't even want to read it. I'll get sick. So anyway, he uh, killed Mr. Schiff, 73-year-old Holocaust survivor, Cecil Schiff, found beaten and strangled to death in a chair in his flushing apartment while his wife was out shopping. The apartment was cleaned out of thousands of dollars of jewelry. Madison was charged with the murder in a 2012 in the middle of serving a 10-year sentence upstate for a different robbery. Prosecutors found three fingerprints in Schiff's apartment that matched Madison's. Well, I think that Obama, since he's going through prison reform, has to really reconsider fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence because I think that the results are biased racially. In that, since more, see, see, here's how Obama would think. Although fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence is irrefutable. That's my dog. He's so excited by the story, he's barking. Since fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence is irrefutable and has been upheld numerous times in courts, and unfortunately, the preponderance of individuals who are convicted based upon such evidence are not white. It means, therefore, ipso facto, fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence is racist. That's how Obama thinks. That's how Eric Holder thinks. So, therefore, they need to reconsider whether fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence should even be used anymore. If, in other words, if the results are biased in terms of the number of people convicted with this evidence, it proves that the, that the scientific method is, is flawed and that you have to throw out fingerprint evidence and DNA evidence. If you don't get the results you want, I mean, if you're a social engineer, that's what you do. It's sort of the same thing with global warming. Even though the evidence doesn't support the idea that man has destroyed the earth, is ruining it, well, the evidence has nothing to do with the conclusion. So you throw the evidence out, and you only use the evidence that you want. This is what you do when you're a community organizer or a pope who is out to take over the world. You get the picture? Anyway, that's the story. Man convicted of raping this 82-year-old woman for four and a half hours, actually arrested, not convicted, uh, made her swear in a Jewish Bible that she wouldn't tell a police or he'd kill her. Oh, my goodness. Where, oh, where, oh, where has this world gone? All right, my friends, that's the good news of the day. It's 44 minutes after the hour. I'm in a total sweat. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Here's another little story out of de Blasio's New New York, where men urinate in the streets in front of drivers. The homeless uh, sleep in the gutter like in Calcutta. And it's got a little twist to it if you listen carefully. Again, from the New York News, came out a minute ago. Man broke 19-year-old woman's jaw, hurled anti-Muslim remarks at her in Chinatown, say the cops. I figured, all right, so white racist did it. Shows you how wrong I can be. I'll read the article to you cold. A 19-year-old Brooklyn woman's jaw was fractured by a man who hurled his fists and anti-Muslim remarks at her in Chinatown, cops said. The woman was wearing garb, identifiable with the Muslim faith, and speaking to her, bro, her brother in Urdu, when the man accused the pair of talking about him at 10.40 p.m. on East Broadway. B.H., what you say, you racist MF? You talking about me in your own language? The five foot ten man wearing a dark baseball hat, T-shirt, and pants, said, before yelling the slurs, spitting at and punching the woman, cops said. See, it's with a twist. It wasn't a Ku Klux Klan member who punched the Muslim woman in the jaw. But I, I think it's a hate crime. I think raping an old Jewish woman is a hate crime if you're not an old Jewish man and you're not married to her. Do you think that uh, de Blasio will instruct his uh, DA to charge it as a hate crime? Do you think, well, you get the picture. You know we're living in the equivalent of the emerging South Africa of America. Didn't work out very well for them in South Africa, despite what the news hides, you know. You look into the history of South Africa then now, you'll see it's really not the paradise that they let you believe it is. Not at all. But the rhetoric that started there and ended with what we have now, is what we, what, that's the rhetoric that's going on in America right now. But I'll save that for a longer uh, discourse. 855-407-282 is the phone number. 
WBAP, Eric, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Uh, I'm calling on that rape on the old Jewish woman. Uh, I'm wanting to see, you know, what's the NAACP and the Reverend going to do about that? Are they going to go and represent him like they do it whenever they're assaulted in any other way? Well, you know the answer to that. Will the president mention it when he oh. won't even mention the when he won't mention the murder of Catherine Steinle in San Francisco because it's an inconvenient truth she was murdered by a Mexican illegal alien? Right. No, we're living through very, very sick times, and I should say sickening times. Not just sick times, Eric, but extremely sickening times when you have a man so committed to community organizing as this. Okay, my friend, yep, things are going to get a lot, lot different before they get a lot better. And we're asking what Obama's agenda will be from here forward. I mean, the day after he pushes through the Iran deal, giving him the right to develop a, a nuclear weapon, fundamentally, he's now working the prisons? This is what he does day in and day out. There's a, a mania here. Is there no end to this man's mania to destroy the middle class in this country and to destroy America while he's at it? Because the middle class is America, make no mistake about it. And he targets the middle class in every one of his measures. Look into it and see what I just said. See if you can refute this. Virtually everything he has done costs the middle class money. I'll take Obamacare, for example, which I rarely ever talk about. Who do you think is going to pay for the care of the poor and the illegal immigrant? You, you moron, the middle class. You haven't seen the payments yet, or the, the costs yet, rather. You! It was aimed at you. You have to pick up the tab for the illegal aliens coming in over the border by the millions. You have to pay for the unaccompanied children, their medical care, their dental care their legal care, their housing, their clothing, their so-called education. You, the middle class, are paying for that. Every one of this man's actions and policies is aimed at the middle class because he, as a longtime Bolshevik, see, I'm not using the word socialist anymore. It's lost its meaning. It'll make him start using the word Bolshevik next. He'll say, well, some even call me a Bolshevik in the media. <laughs> He'll have to look that one up. Being the good Bolshevik that he is, he understands that the bourgeoisie, better known as the middle class, has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, the middle class has got to go. So you do it in any way you can, financial, moral. Anything you can do, you break the middle class. You bust the family up. You destroy the meaning of family. Do it any way you can. Because if you can destroy the family, you can destroy the nation. So it's not enough that he does all of these things. He needs more. And he brings up Bill Cosby today. This is his problem, Bill Cosby. Gave, uh, I ran a nuclear weapon in time. I understand it's not tomorrow. But uh, that's not enough for him. Didn't take a breather. On the, he's, on a, he's on a roll. So next day, the prisons. That's all. Cops hunting teens who grow up four women in Brooklyn. Teens, huh? Go take a look at the pictures. Cops hunting teens who grow up four women in Brooklyn. Teens. I love the word teens. The Middle East teens are picking up Kalashnikovs, teens. Supposed to have sympathy for a teen. Unbelievable to me, teen. Teen. What does a teen mean? A six foot two man and a teen. What's the difference between them and a teen? Tell me the difference between a teen. Think of the word. Say the word teen over and over again until it has no meaning. It has no meaning. A rapist is a rapist no matter what his age. A murderer is a murderer of any age. Say teen, teen, teen. Teen has no meaning. Say it a hundred times, you'll see what it means. Nothing. And yet the media use it to describe thugs over and over again. All right, that's it.